Hello everyone. In this video I'd like to talk through the key differences between sexual and asexual reproduction. This video is designed for those studying for the GCSE or IGCSE in biology, but there are definitely a number of elements here that are relevant to the A-level uh, course. So I want to start by first of all giving a definition for these two things, for asexual and sexual reproduction. Now obviously I've put them already onto the screen, but I want to highlight just key things in these definitions that really bring home this difference between the two types of reproduction. With asexual reproduction, the key things to know is that we're producing genetically identical offspring. They're clones ultimately of one another and they derive from one single parent. Now crucially with asexual reproduction there is no genetic variation. So we've got a process resulting in the production of genetically identical offspring from one single parent and it's a type of cell division known as mitosis which hopefully should be familiar at this stage for many of you. And unlike sexual reproduction that we're going to come on to, there is no genetic variation. We're literally just creating clones. So if, if the offspring do vary, that would only, as the definition says, would come about from an environmental factor, an environmental change. One single parent resulting in clones, so no genetic variation. Now that is notably different to sexual reproduction, because here we've got the fusion of the nuclei of two gametes. So this isn't just from one single parent. With sexual reproduction, we're fusing the nuclei of two gametes, so for example, sperm and egg. And they are haploid. Haploid means it's got half the number of chromosomes. So we know from very early on in school that sperm has half the DNA that it's meant to, egg has half the DNA that it's meant to. It comes together and you get a full set of genetic material. Well, that's wholly relevant to this. So here, unlike asexual reproduction, we've got the fusion of the nuclei of two gametes. And what they form is what's called a zygote. So we're not forming genetically, genetically identical offspring or clones. We're forming a zygote that is diploid. So this word here, diploid, I'll just circle that there. That means it's got a full set of chromosomes. So if we think about all of your body cells... All of those cells in your body are diploid cells, other than sperm and egg. Sperm and egg are haploid, they have half the number of chromosomes, but every other, thing, every other cell in your body is a diploid cell. You'll notice as well, in the sexual reproduction definition, this part here introduces variation. That is the most crucial element to this definition, in my opinion, if we're trying to compare asexual and sexual reproduction. The offspring that we produce through sexual reproduction are genetically different to one another. So you can see I've kind of highlighted three particular areas. So at the top, for asexual reproduction, genetic identical offspring, one single parent, no genetic variation. For sexual reproduction, I've highlighted the fusion of nuclear two gametes, forming a zygote introducing variation. Now I've deliberately highlighted three areas because in the um, typically IGCSE mark schemes this is a three mark question. So I've tried to give the three core elements to these definitions that you should in an exam mention. I've got a diagram on the bottom left of the screen. Uh, just a very simple one with a whole load of circles to represent cells parent cells and offspring, I just want to talk through the, the numbers that would go in each of these. So let's look at asexual reproduction. We've got a parent cell with 46, which is the number of chromosomes being carried. So I'm just looking, swear upon an asterisk here. Now through asexual reproduction, if we're producing a clone, then after mitosis, so cell division, we should produce two genetically identical cells. So both of those would have 46 chromosomes in. And again, through subsequent divisions, or through cell division, ultimately mitosis, once again, we've got the production of cells with 46 
chromosomes in. And it says here these are all clones of the original parent cell. Now if we compare that with sexual reproduction, and I'll use uh, red for this just to highlight the difference. We start with the male cell, the sperm, and the female cell, the egg, both with 46. But after a period of meiosis, so cell division producing the gametes, the sperm and egg, what we get are cells with 23 chromosomes. Remember, these are haploid cells. So these cells would have half the original number. And when one sperm meets one egg, when the nuclei of a sperm and nuclei of an egg fuse together, we'd get a diploid cell with 46. And it says here the offspring is a hybrid of the original two parent cells. So numerically, that's just to highlight the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction. Here on asexual reproduction, you can see that with just in each level of this diagram, we have 46 chromosomes, ultimately because we're just producing clones. We're not, like sexual reproduction, producing cells with half the number of chromosomes. Just an interesting thing to add about sexual reproduction. Uh, certain questions allude to it, others don't. Sexual reproduction doesn't always involve two parents. Self-fertilisation, which is really common in plants, is still classed, though, as sexual reproduction. So even if a plant is self-fertilising, we still class it as sexual reproduction. So technically, sexual reproduction doesn't always involve two parents. I've got a few pictures on the right-hand side of this screen. I wanted to just suggest what these pictures relate to, because with sexual reproduction, I've, I've talked about the production of sperm and egg, but these four images all relate to asexual reproduction. They're all types of asexual reproduction. At the top left of this, so the top left image, if I just call this number one here, if I call this two, I'll call this three and this four. So these are just examples of asexual reproduction. So top left, what we've got is something called binary fission. This is a type of asexual reproduction in bacteria, producing clones, ultimately. For image two, what we're seeing here is something known as budding. And budding is something we see in yeast cells. For number three, what we've got here is spore production. And this relates to fungi. And for number four, what we've got here is something called vegetative propagation. An example of this is the production of sort of strawberry runners, if you like, or potato tubers. So we've got four examples here, binary fission, budding, spore production and vegetative, vegetative apologies, propagation. They are all examples of asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction produces things like sperm and egg, the gametes. So now that we've got a definition for these two uh, types of reproduction, we've talked through some of the numbers and I've given some examples of asexual reproduction. Let's just finish, because uh, this is only meant to be a short video, with a few advantages and disadvantages of both types of reproduction. So here we've got a table with sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction, advantages and disadvantages. I'll stick with the colours blue for asexual and red for the sexual. So let's just put a few of these pros and cons in, if you like. So with sexual reproduction, one of the most crucial things is that it facilitates adaptations. And because it facilitates adaptation, because cells are able to form organisms that can adapt, ultimately what that's going to do, and you could argue that this is perhaps the most important point of this whole table, is that it will encourage evolution. If we think about sperm and egg, it's totally random which sperm and egg combine. 
I've done other Mr. I Explain videos on uh, reproduction and, and I talk more in detail about genetic variability and that kind of thing. So that's something I want to add to this table. One of the advantages of sexual reproduction is you get a lot, I'll just put the word there, high or increased genetic, and I'll use the word that I just said there, variability. Now what that allows ultimately is members of a species to overcome large scale spread of disease. But there are problems, there are disadvantages of sexual reproduction. It usually, and I say usually given the point I said earlier in the video, it usually needs two parents, whereas I've said before asexual reproduction just needs one. It's energy intensive, it requires a great deal of energy to sexually reproduce. And it's slower. Notice I've not said slow, I've said slower, comparative to asexual reproduction. Courtship is time consuming. So again, I've done another video on courtship behaviour, so if you're interested, if you're interested, but courtship is time consuming. We can add that to the list. And another one, um, I think it's relevant to include is that with sexual reproduction, what we find is that usually we sacrifice the fitness of one sex to the other. But we've got plenty in this table, but there's another point that I think is worth mentioning. Usually we sacrifice the fitness of one sex to the other with sexual reproduction. Now let's consider asexual reproduction. Now, if we were to directly compare this one, we would say that this is very quick. It's a very quick process compared with sexual reproduction. It saves energy because we only typically need one parent. So we can add that as well. Only need one parent. Courtship doesn't become an issue. So for completing the sake, we'll put the down. Courtship is not an issue. And just related to the idea of fitness again, um, you get a greater increase in fitness for each individual here. But I won't add that to the table, but that's something else we could add, that there's a greater increase in fitness for each individual involved. But one of the key advantages of asexual reproduction, and this relates more to plants, is that we can exploit it. Now, I'm not going to write the whole sentence here, but if you are taking notes, I'm going to star this one because this is one of the most important points. It can be exploited in bulbs and rhizomes, so things like daffodils and orchids, to improve crop consistency, quality and yield. So I'll just say that again, that last bit, because that's the most important. We can exploit it to improve crop consistency, crop quality and crop yield. But having said that, there are indeed disadvantages to asexual reproduction. Here we're getting absolutely no variation at all. Now because of that, organisms are far more susceptible to disease. If you have clones of one another ultimately, and if one Let's say one cell is susceptible to disease because that cell is susceptible. All the other clones are going to have the same trait. So they're all going to be susceptible. So by having no variation, you make them all more at risk ultimately. Now, I said that sexual reproduction encourages evolution. This slows the process of evolution because all we're doing is creating genetic clones. And any adaptation, to finish with, any adaptation to an environmental change is therefore, because of what I've just said, 
very difficult to do. So adaptations to an environmental change is difficult. That's because we don't have, like sexual reproduction does, the ability to facilitate adaptation. For cells to change, if you like, for organisms to adapt to the new environment, changing abiotic and biotic factors. Asexual reproduction is just, yes, it's very quick, but we're just creating clones of the parent. So for all of their positives, they inherit, if you like, all of their faults too. So there we've just got a quick summary table of the differences between sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction in terms of the advantages and disadvantages. And previously we've just given a definition to describe the core differences between the two and a few examples of asexual reproduction. So if you've got any questions, just leave a comment at the bottom of the video. I hope all that helps.